Hey guys, it's the Movie Buff Pains, and today in our video we're going to be showcasing our complete collection. It'll be an overview video as well as a room tour updated for 2021. So Beth is the one going to be taking you on the tour today. But before we get into that, we just wanted to say thank you guys so much. We got to a thousand subscribers and we're still getting more and we are so thankful to you guys for the subscriptions. I mean, it is amazing. We can't believe so many of you like watching us do what we do. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so much. We're going to be doing a Q&A soon, actually. And so if you have questions for us, go ahead and send them to us on Instagram to movie buff beth she is far more likely to look at her feed than i am i'm mm -hmm. not that big on social media myself well besides youtube obviously that is true <laughs> that is true either way send us your questions on instagram so we can kind of get them all together and yeah we'll be doing a q a in the near future and we can't wait to do it with you guys also let us know what videos you want to see in the near future and we will try to get around to filming them but until then we're gonna hop behind the camera and show you our collection all right so we're gonna start with the horror corner it's kind of an awkward space in our house um, that we wouldn't otherwise really use so it worked out perfectly to put some of our boutique labels out here on display um, and it's a way for us to display some of our our favorite pieces in the collection we call it the horror corner because it's mostly horror boutique labels over here there are a few labels that are not necessarily horror but for the most part this section is horror so we'll go ahead and get a little bit closer and show you what we have i'll start with the shelf on the left over here um, as you can see across the top of these cubes we have some of our favorite box sets um, real quick these cubes are from target they're just very basic cheap cube storage um, and then andrew bought some two by fours uh, measured them for the shape of each cube, put them in the middle so we could use uh, both sides of the cubes. And it's a really good way to have some freestanding Blu-ray storage in the house, so it's really cool. So I'll go ahead and show you what's up top first. First we have the Al Adamson collection from Severin. Really cool. I actually haven't dived into this set yet because it kind of overwhelms me to be honest, but yeah, pretty cool to have. And then another box set from Severin. It's the Lindsay Baker Giallo collection. And then of course we have the giant Gamera complete collection from Aero Video. Um, haven't dived into those yet either, but really looking forward to those. And then we have the Friday the 13th box set from Screen Factory. They really knocked it out of the ballpark with this box set. It's beautiful. Great addition to the collection for sure. And we have the Phantasm collection from Welgo USA. Remember, this was pretty hard to come by shortly after it came out. And then moving right along, we have, of course, the Halloween box set from Screen Factory. I actually didn't get this when it first came out. It came out kind of before I started collecting, at least collecting Screen Factory. Um, so I originally just had this, you know, the basic box set that's sitting beside it found that at a Walmart and then uh, I found the giant box set the 15 disc box set from a pawn shop so pretty cool to have that and then sitting on top of that is a uh, Michael Myers figurine that we got from Spirit Halloween last Halloween I actually bought it the day after it was like 50% off pretty cool and then we have the FYE blood splattered exclusive Michael Myers pop figure and then this is the Psycho Legacy collection from Germany really cool box set and then we have of course the Norman Bates pop figure the Fly collection and the Omen collection from Scream Factory so yeah these uh, cubes provide a great place for us to put some of our larger box sets and also have kind of a cool display and thankfully most of the cats don't jump up here occasionally our smallest one will because she's about the only one that can fit up there but they stay away from it pretty well then moving over here on the top shelf we have my severin collection we've got the severin brain there as well as the color out of space audiobook on top 
Got a few random pieces of memorabilia from Severin on there. I organized these similar to how I organized a bunch of my other uh, labels over here. We start with the box sets, then we go into my slipcover releases. And then we go into the non-slipcover releases. Sorry about the creaky floors. And then at the end there I have my lone Severin DVD. And coming over here to the bottom two shelves we have Blue Underground. At the very bottom we have 88 Films. 88 Films is sorted kind of a similar way. They have a bunch of different lines. I try to keep them together because they look more aesthetically pleasing that way. And then besides the Blue Underground there we have my Scorpion Releasing Collection. And then on the bottom I have my Dark Force Entertainment. So yeah, that's everything I have on the front there. And then we'll come over here to our little end cap. These end caps, these are small solder media shelves. I'm not sure if you could still buy them. A lot of our smaller, more random shelving we bought secondhand, like from Facebook Marketplace or something. Uh, these ones I got probably for like $5 each but they work perfectly as little end caps for our cube storage. Um, up top we have the uh, Pennywise Georgie pop figure. It's like a movie moment one. And then coming down here we have the Synapse collection. Pretty small collection, but they have some great films in their catalog. One of my favorite horror films specifically, Suspiria. Then that runs into the Mondo Macabro collection. And then we have Grindhouse releasing, and at the bottom we have Intervision, which of course is a branch off from Severin, but they just fit better over here, so that's where they are. So yeah, those work out really well as little end pieces for the collection. And we'll come around to the other end cap. And say hi to Kiwi over there. Up top, that's kind of like a little Pennywise figurine holder, an exorcist mug, and then an ash pocket pop. And then we have the Vestron video series. Uh, they're few and far between these days, but they are some of my favorite releases. I love those. And then we have the MVD Rewind collection, another numbered collection that roped me in. And those are kind of just all over the place genre releases. And then we have Massacre Video, followed by Raro Video. And then at the bottom we have Cult Epics and Redemption Films. And then at the very end we have the new line started up by some of the guys at Diabolic DVD called Cauldron Films. I do apologize if there's cat fur or dust anywhere. It's kind of hard to maintain. So yeah, there's the front of the cubes and the end of the cubes. Down there on the floor, you've probably noticed I got a Jason rug. Really loved that. I got it from Creepy Company. I need to add a couple more rugs back here. Planning on getting a couple more from them. And before we go into those, I'll show you what's on the back of the cubes here. Real quick, the back of the cubes, they are unfinished because these are pieces of furniture designed to be placed against a wall. But we have them freestanding. Um, so that's just kind of the way we have them. It doesn't bother me terribly. Maybe one day we'll sand them down and paint them, but for now it works for me. Um, and this section back here, this is kind of the non-horror stuff. At the top we have steelbooks. We're not huge on collecting steelbooks these days, but we do still have quite a few. And those kind of just go across the top there. And of course, I will sit down and go through all of these labels individually at some point um, so you can see the individual titles. Um, and then we have the Warner Archive collection, actually one of my favorite labels, really like the stuff they put out. Followed by our Twilight Time collection, one that's grown quite a lot recently actually, I'm able to pick up a lot of those on the cheap. 
couple of random pop figures down there. We got Baymax and uh, Jaws. So yeah, there's the the back of the cubes. Again, not totally great looking with the unfinished side, but doesn't bother me terribly and provides us with a lot of storage. And then down there at the bottom, you can see the two by four that we use so that we can make these double-sided. Uh, but yeah, really like those cubes. We have more in the main collection room that you'll see a little bit later. Alrighty, coming over here to the big Atlantic Elite shelf. This is of course the Scream Factory collection. Uh, I did do a Scream Factory collection video, if you guys want to check that out. It's one of the first videos that I did, so it's not the greatest video in audio-wise and confidence level-wise, but we'll do another one of those pretty soon. Once I get through some of the other labels, um, you can expect another updated Scream Factory collection video. But yeah, Scream Factory is probably the label I've collected the longest, followed by Arrow Video. Um, one day I hope to have a complete Scream Factory collection. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but it is a goal I have, so hopefully one day. But I'll go ahead and start up top. Sorry if you hear cats running around. Can't really control them, but uh, they're always doing that. At the very top we've got a couple NECA figures for the Fog and Silent Night, Deadly Night. I thought they fit pretty well out here since those are both released by Scream Factory. Um, and then we have the good guy Chucky and Michael Myers pop from Halloween H2O. And then we have a couple of box sets up there. We have the Critters collection and the Record collection on the ends. I have a couple of my alternate slipcovers up there. We got Candyman, My Bloody Valentine, and Night of the Creeps. I still need to get the ones for Carrie and uh, blanking on what the other one is that I need, but. Hopefully I can find those one day. And also the cool box sets for Nightbreed and Creepshow. But yeah, slipcovers first, all in alphabetical order. I do own all of the collector's editions of slipcovers. Pretty happy about that. And then after the slipcovers, I have my steelbooks, followed by the non-slipcovers. And in the middle shelf there, I have some various horror pop figures. So yeah, again, this is the Atlantic Elite Media Shelf. We have a bunch of these in the collection. They're great shelving as long as you anchor them to the wall. I'll link these shelves below for sure. And then over here, this is just kind of a random IKEA shelf that we found at a thrift store. But it is media depth, so I really like it. On this shelf, we have the Code Red collection. And up top, we've got a bunch of pop figures. Uh, these lights used to work, we <laughs> kind of wore them out, but uh, need to put some more lighting over here. Yeah, there's the Code Red collection. Got a little bit of room to grow. A couple more pieces of horror memorabilia. Uh, Night of the Creeps figure and Krampus. And we have Kiwi, who likes to be the star of the show. So say hi to Kiwi. Kiwi! She doesn't want to say hi, I guess. All right, so moving over here, uh, first of all, the wall art is all from Spirit Halloween. Uh, these two shelves over here, um, these are solder shelves as well. I think they're a little harder to come by um, these days, but they are good shelving if you happen to find them secondhand. Yep, so on this left shelf, we have the Arrow Video Collection. And then on the right shelf is the Vinegar Syndrome collection. I'll go ahead and pull in a little closer and show you what we have up there. Uh, we have the Herschel Gordon Lewis Feast, Crimson Peak, George A. Romero's Between Night and Dawn, Robocop Phenomena, the Hellraiser Scarlet Box, the House Collection from the UK, the Complete Sartana, and the Ring Collection also from the UK. Just some of my favorite box sets, and it also allows for some more shelving space um, since we are limited on that for Aero. These are organized by uh, box sets first, so box sets that have multiple films, followed by box sets that are single films, followed by slipcover releases, 
and then I've got a couple of Aero Steel books, not very many, and then it's all of my non-slip editions. And they do run over onto that shelf a little bit, running out of space for the arrows. But hopefully I'll figure out more space soon. You have to be pretty creative when it comes to having a collection this size. But yeah, there's the arrow collection. Then moving over here, we have the vinegar syndromes. On the top, we have the Beastmaster release that they just recently did. Then these are all of the VSA releases in alphabetical order. I thought they looked kind of cool all up there together. I'm gonna run out of room for those pretty soon, but yeah, that's how it goes. And then we have those mini slip covers that they did that came with pins inside. Kind of a fun little piece. Then we have the Forgotten Gialli box sets, volume one and two, the Angel Collection, and the Amityville Curse Collection. They've been doing a really great job with these box sets. They look awesome. And then just like my other labels, we have the slipcover editions first, followed by the non-slipcover editions. These are all in alphabetical order, by the way. And then at the end there, um, we have some of the DVDs that I own, some of my extra slipcovers at the very end. And then at the bottom, again, we have the arrow overflow, and then these are all of the partner labels that Vinegar Syndrome has teamed up with, uh, like AGFA, Fun City Editions, and whatnot. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up the horror corner, or kind of boutique label corner that we have here. A little bit of a closer look on the uh, Jason rug there. I think my cats love it even more than I do, so it's probably covered in fur. Not sure if you guys are into vinyl, but I do have a vinyl collection over here. Up top, we got a City and Color poster, my favorite artists. So that's super organized right now, sorry about that. Got a bunch of newer vinyl pickups up top. Um, and I have my awesome clip speakers. Uh, great sound for vinyl. Then I got all my vinyl organized here, not necessarily in alphabetical order. Um, got a bunch of horror, horror and movie soundtracks up top. Didn't show this off in our last collection overview, so I thought I would just give it a quick scan. Um, but yeah, this this shelf has all the horror and movie soundtracks, the newer stuff, as well as some older movie soundtracks there. And then uh, a lot of my like newer, more modern artists are on this shelf. This is one of those um, cube storage cube storage shelves from Walmart, very similar to the IKEA units. This one might actually be from IKEA. I can't remember. And then there's a little cat cube at the bottom. You give them lots of stuff to play with; they don't mess with your other shit as much. <laughs> um, definitely show you guys this more in depth if anyone's interested. Again, I have a lot of movie soundtracks, so it might be cool to share since this is a movie channel. And then over here, we got our record player, uh, our main record player. We actually have three, one in our bedroom and one in our retro room. Um, it's a U-turn Orbit. I love it. It's a great, great record player. And then I have a five CD changer there because I do own a lot of CDs, sometimes I like to throw them on while I'm cleaning. And then up top we have the toothless Build-A-Bear. And the main reason that he's up there is the cats will jump on this record player if I don't have something on top. So there you go. And then this cool record stand has some storage inside for records as well that I found secondhand. Some overflow of the CD collection right there. Sorry, it's really dusty over here, I'm realizing now. And then we've got our cat tree with Rocky taking a nap right there. Sorry, this light's really bright, bud. Got some more movie stuff over here, so I thought I'd show you real quick. I uh, got some movie posters. We got Robocop, Lady and the Tramp, Nightmare on Elm Street, the My Bloody Valentine, Scream Factory poster. Sorry for the giant glare in this one, but Booksmart, one of my favorite movies. 
And then over here on top of the piano, I've got some of my favorite records, our favorite records, I should say. Uh, Jurassic Park Mondo, one of Andrew's all-time favorites. It's one of his favorite films. And then Tenebrae and Friday the 13th. And the How to Train Your Dragon soundtrack, another one of Andrew's favorites. And one of my all-time favorite albums from Amberlin, Never Take Friendship Personal. Yeah, we have a piano. I don't know if you guys care about that. <laughs> And uh, a couple of amps there, a bunch of cat toys, and got a, got, got a guitar and a bass guitar over here, kind of in the way, but some more of our vinyl, if you guys wanted to see that. And a bunch of CDs in the background there, Blink-182 Pops. Again, a little bit of a tangent, but uh, it's part of our collection nonetheless, so I thought I'd show you. And then coming over here, this is kind of the main entryway into our house, although we never use this door over here. We use the back door a lot more, but uh, if people were to come visit, this is the first thing that they would see. It's, we got our director's chair, a Candyman poster. Have a little shelf over here. This is another Atlantic shelf. Um, don't think they even make this anymore. It's really nice if you kind of have a small space that you don't know what to do with. A lot of these shelves we bought in our last home and we just kind of had to find places to put them here but up top we have a Jaws standy. got this at Days of the Dead horror convention and then we got a bunch of the Big Bang Theory mystery minis sorry it's really dusty <laughs> those are the first mystery minis that we uh, collected and then we have some of our box sets out here these just don't fit super well into the normal collection they kind of mess up spacing, so it's easier just to keep them all together. Don't show these very often, but this is where we keep them. Don't have a ton of them out here, but we have a few. And then I've kind of started to keep some of my uh, limited edition larger box sets of horror films out here as well, because I'm running out of display space in the other room. Uh, but yeah, these are from like Second Sight, Eureka, Got the Ronin flicks, I spit on your grave there. Yeah, indicator, and just a random selection there. And then we just recently moved our digi books out here. These are another thing that are really awkward to fit anywhere in the collection. So, put them out here. It works because we don't buy them very often. The director's chair, our cats use that far more than we ever do. Uh, this is one of Andrew's My Little Pony displays. Those ponies are always falling over. And then we got a bunch of Xbox 360 games that we couldn't really find anywhere else to store. And this is another Atlantic shelf that we got secondhand. Oh, and real quick before I go over into the main area, we got our Welcome to Haddonfield sign. And then over here, we got a Halloween poster and a Michael Myers sign that we got at Spirit Halloween. Alrighty, so continuing on, we are now in our main living area. Just thought I'd show you these posters real quick. Uh, I got a couple of Scream Factory ones. We have Sleepwalkers and Urban Legend. And The Burning, one of my all-time favorite slashers. Then we got a couple of autographed photos uh, from when we went, met PJ Souls. She's a really sweet lady. It was a lot of fun to meet her. And uh, that shot up there from Halloween is one of my all-time favorite horror scenes, so I had to have her sign that one, but yeah, such a sweet lady. So over here on this wall, we have all of our 4Ks as well as our Kino collection. Uh, it began as only our 4Ks, but we had a lot of extra space on that right shelf, so we moved our Kinos out here as well. I really like having these out here though. Uh, it gives us a great film selection for when we can't decide and don't want to go into the movie room. Up top, of course, we have some more movie posters. We have Spotlight, Pitch Perfect, The Force Awakens, and A Clockwork Orange. Uh, that's another art print that I got from Days of the Dead. And the first thing up top, we have Stranger Things Seasons 1 and 2 on 4K, and a Max pop figure, the only Stranger Things pop figure that I own. However, I thought that one was really cool. She's got the uh, Michael Myers mask. And I got a little Reagan figure. And we have our Back to the Future hoverboard that came with the 4K collection. And then we have Crash. This is the German media book. It is a 4K. 
Um, I did already pick up the uh, Arrow video release as well, but I uh, definitely have to keep this one. It's a cool piece for the collection. And then we have the Midsommar Director's Cut 4K from A24, probably one of the coolest pieces in the 4K collection. And then we have a few horror figures over here. I got Bride of Frankenstein, Laurie Strode, uh, Beetlejuice, and a little Jaws poster. Uh, these uh, keychains are fun, but it's always hard to find somewhere to put them. So yeah, stepping back, we've got all of our 4Ks in alphabetical order. Um, this is one of the shorter Atlantic shelves due to that lovely light right there. This is what we kind of had to do. But keep an eye out soon. We will be doing a complete 4K video. A video of all of our 4Ks in our collection, one by one. And then coming over here, we got some more posters. We got the Suspiria remake, the Beyond, probably my favorite Fulci flick, Suspiria the original, Nightmare on Elm Street. And then coming up top here, um, at the very top we have all my Toonie Terror figures. Love these, always trying to collect all of them, and there will be plenty more to add. And then we have uh, They Live, Prince of Darkness, and The Fog on 4K. These are the Studio Canal releases from the UK. Um, obviously, Scream Factory's released They Live and Prince of Darkness now, and I'm sure The Fog is forthcoming, but uh, they're really cool pieces in the collection, so I'm happy to have them. Then I have the Second Sight Dawn of the Dead 4K set. Really beautiful piece to have, and one of my all-time favorite horror films. And then to the right of that, we have the Alfred Hitchcock Classics Collection. It's Rear Window, Vertigo, Psycho and the Birds, the Back to the Future Trilogy, and the Elephant Man on 4K. Uh, this is the Studio Canal release from the UK. Don't really plan on picking up the Criterion because I've really been hoping they would release 4Ks by now, but they still haven't, unfortunately. So yeah, taking a step back here, that's the end of the 4K collection. Um, keep the Westworld seasons right here just because they are so awkwardly shaped. They kind of make a good bookend. Then we also have the Columbia Classics box set. It's kind of hard to photograph. Sorry about that. Then we have two of my favorite 4K releases right here. They're Steelbooks from Best Buy, Arrival, and Halloween. And then right below that we have the Disney on 4K collection. Uh, we decided to separate these just because they look so good all together. Happy we did that. Then we have our Lego Las Vegas. And then in the middle we have some random miscellaneous knickknacks. First of all we have the Binks figure from Hocus Pocus. Cinephile a card game. If you like movie trivia games I definitely recommend that one. Um, we have Chandler, the little small figure, as well as the Central Perk ornament. Then in the middle we've got some Parks and Rec and Office minifigures. And then this very sad display of horror uh, pocket pops that don't like to stand. Maybe one day I'll have the patience to get those to stand. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> And then, like I said, at the bottom we have our Kino collection. Really great label, one of my favorites. Uh, they have a lot of great releases. I organize these similarly to my other labels. Um, at the front, these are just the Kino Lorber releases that don't really fit in with the rest, uh, followed by the Kino Lorber Studio Classics releases, starting with the ones that have slipcovers. And a couple of these are actually 4K, uh, like Hannibal and Mad Max. And then we got the rest of the studio classics. Need to do a complete Kino video pretty soon here because they're a great label. Release a lot of great genre films and films I otherwise would have never seen. Uh, really like these. I know a lot of people don't like the spines. They think they're kind of boring, but I think they look cool and uniform together. So happy to have those. Hi, Tom. And over here we have a shelf I forgot to show off last time. This is a bunch of our current gen games. 
I uh, got our Nintendo Switch and Xbox One games on here. And we have all kinds of cat toys all over the floor and Kiwi again, of course. And then this is our uh, kind of our entertainment setup. Sorry, it's a little messy with cat toys, but this is the setup we have here. I'll link our home theater specifications in the description below. Uh, we have an OLED that we just recently purchased that we really love. It looks fantastic and it's a great way to enjoy movies. We have a Hell Knight Scream Factory poster over here. Then this area over here is the entryway to the movie room and the game room, also known as the retro room. In the movie room door we have a Night of the Creeps poster um, from Screen Factory and an Invasion of the Blood Farmers poster from Severin. That was autographed. Alrighty, so now we are in the main collection room here. Probably looks a little more familiar to you guys because this is where we film most of our videos. really happy to have a room like this in my house. It's been a dream of mine for a long time, so to be able to make it a reality is really awesome. Before we dive into the collection, I'll show you the posters we have over here. We have The Way Way Back, Candyman, Garden State, My Bloody Valentine, a cool art print of Suspiria, Perks of Being a Wallflower, and Mean Girls. Some of my all-time favorite films over here. And then the shelf over here by the door, this is kind of our overflow shelf right now. We were able to create an entire shelf of empty space um, with the last adjustment we did to this room. So right now all it has on it are Blu-rays and DVDs that have yet to be put into the collection. Uh, we got some pop figures up top as well as a couple of NECAs. Some of my favorite pop figures are up there. And a couple of new pop figures we've added. Some other miscellaneous things. Got a couple of wire DVD racks that we have as extra overflow space. And as always, we have a bag of stuff that we've been meaning to get rid of, so yeah. Um, so the purpose of this main movie room mostly is to house our um, alphabetical collection in the various genres that they fall under. Um, they're organized by genre and then also organized by alphabetical order, of course. And we got shelves all around the room. So I'll go ahead and start right here. Um, up top, we have some reaction figures in the Harry Potter Hogwarts collection, as well as some limited edition Target digibooks of some of the Hunger Games films, which they did one for the first movie, but they didn't. And then over here we have the Star Wars Force Awakens 3D Collector's Edition and some pint-sized sci-fi figures up top. Each genre is um, headed by a pop figure that is representative of the genre. So at the beginning here, this is our action-adventure collection headed by the Hulk. Um, you may be wondering why there's extra space at the front. Um, when you're putting a lot of movies away, it's hard to count exactly the amount that needs to be put away. Um, so we usually do end up a little, with a little bit of extra space up front, but it makes it a little easier to put stuff away um, when we organize next time. So we'll usually just leave it as it is. Um, so yeah, we got the action adventure collection here. Again, all in alphabetical order. Then the middle shelf there, we have some soundtracks on CD. And these are organized by shelf. Um, we don't go all the way across. It would get awfully difficult to organize if we did it that way. So uh, they're basically just shelf down, organized. So yeah, there's the action adventure collection. And then if we look at the very bottom, uh, that's the beginning of the Animation Family Collection with uh, Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon 2. 
Um, by the way, be sure to check out my uh, complete collection videos to see all these titles separately. Action Adventure will be the next one that I do. Um, I haven't done one for Animation Family yet. That will definitely be one I do with Andrew. Um, some more pop figures and Dorbs figures up top there and a whole bunch of them. We have lots of Animation Family stuff that we'll do together. I'll share all those with you guys. And then the next genre is headed by Gretchen from Mean Girls, so of course it's comedy. I uh, got some more music related stuff in the middle there. Uh, as well as a couple of shot glasses from the movie Neighbors. Got my Reliant K and Amberlin albums. Growing up, Reliant K was my favorite band. As I've gotten older, Amberlin has become more so, uh, but I'd also probably say Foles now. And then uh, autograph CD from Switchfoot and Amberlin, as well as a guitar pick that I got from the guitarist of uh, Fireflight. Yeah, there's all of the uh, comedy movies. This is the first complete collection video that I did, so if you guys want to check that one out, you should. I uh, go over all of the titles uh, individually. And again, some more pop figures up top here. I also have a little Jason plushie, uh, a bunch of Patriots pop figures, SNL, and Friends. There's our comedy collection, and it goes down there. And then in the middle of this shelf, we've got a bunch of video game stuff, a bunch of amiibos, some plushies, a whole lot of randomness. And then we got our next genre here, which is crime thriller, which is headed by Alex DeLarge from The Clockwork Orange. Also did a crime thriller collection video if you guys want to check that out to see all of the titles individually. And then coming over here we kind of break up the genre collection a little bit. I'll take a step back here so you can see what we got. Uh, got some more Atlantic shelving. Of course all of these large shelves around are Atlantic elites. Uh, these are called Oscar shelves. They're only like 50 bucks on Amazon. Um, they're really pretty nice shelves. I mean they're not anything fantastically sturdy or anything, but uh, they do the job. And uh, by adding that third shelf on the right, we were able to create a lot of new space, um, as well as moving the kinos out in the main area. But as you can tell, we have the uh, Criterion collection here, as well as a few other labels. Um, real quick though, I've got my Trick or Treat Scream Factory poster, as well as a couple of NECAs. We've got Sam and Ghostface. We'll go ahead and start right here. Criterion Collection. Um, up top we have the America Lost and Found set, the Guillermo del Toro Trilogia, um, the Carol Zeman box set, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, and the Before Trilogy. Love those films. Um, I organize Criterion in a similar fashion to my other labels. I have the box sets or kind of digi packs at the beginning. I just think they look better all together. And then I have the regular regular case criterions following that. I will be doing a criterion collection video soon. I do hope to do that one within the next month or so. And then up top here we have the complete Jacques Toddy set, the Ingmar Bergman cinema set, and Bruce Lee's greatest hits. And the rest of the criterions here. In the end, on this third shelf down with the singular Criterion DVD I have, Kicking and Screaming. Then we have the Paramount Presents collection. They're numbered, so I like to keep them all together. Then these are kind of my uh, premium Korean box sets. Uh, Plain Archive, Nova Media, Kimchi DVD, and a few other various releases there. Uh, it's some of my all-time favorite films in here, though. Great releases, great to have in the collection. And then at the bottom here I have my Universal Monsters collection. Got a couple of pop figures as well as the slipcover releases of the big films and their legacy collections. And then coming over here up top we have a few more Criterion box sets. We have the Jacques Demi set, the Agnes Varda box set, and the Godzilla Showa era box set. Um, which I actually really like. I think it makes a great display piece. I know a lot of people weren't happy with the size of it, but I think it looks great. 
And then down here we have the Shout Select collection, another numbered line that I couldn't resist getting into. Um, I was doing really well for a long time having all of these, but um, their releases got to be a bit more expensive and there were a lot of them, so it was a little harder to keep up with. Hopefully I'll catch up at some point. And then right below them we just have our regular um, Shout Factory releases. So this is basically anything that doesn't fall under the Scream line. So yeah, there we go. Just three shelves that kind of break up the genre collection there. And then above the window, this is probably Andrew's favorite part of the collection. This is his pride and joy, the Lord of the Rings shelf. Um, starting from the left here, have a bunch of figures, mystery minis and whatnot. And then he has the books, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings books. He's got the animated films, the uh, deluxe DVD box sets, the Blu-ray box set and the 4K box set of the Lord of the Rings films, and the 3D editions of the Hobbit films, and a custom Blu-ray he made of the Tukish cut, and the 4K trilogy of the Hobbit. He also has the soundtracks, the deluxe soundtracks for Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit and the Frodo Baggins pop figure at the end there. Andrew's favorite part of the collection, for sure. He loves it. Um, and this floating shelf above the window is from Ikea, if you're wondering. And we'll come over here. Again, this is where the crime thriller collection continues. Um, up top, we got a bunch of NECA figures. And the crime thriller co collection here. Did a video of this one again, if you want to check it out. And then we've got some DS and 3DS games in the middle. A little random, but it works. And then the next genre is our smallest genre, but it is growing. And that is the documentary collection. Which is headed by Mr. Rogers because of the great Won't You Be My Neighbor documentary that we own. As you can see, it's a really small collection, but uh, again, it's growing and I like to have them separated in case I feel like watching a documentary. And then the next genre that we have is drama, which is headed by John Bender, The Breakfast Club. This is by far our largest genre, and it starts right there at the bottom of the shelf. But before we continue on to the rest of the drama, I'll have to show you the DVDs, which are in the middle here. Um, up top we have the complete series of 24, as well as Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? I do have this on Blu-ray now, but that box set is just way too cool to get rid of. Then we have the pop figure of Scooby-Doo in the Haunted Mansion. And again, I should mention that these are the uh, non-horror DVDs that we own. I do separate the horror DVDs. And these shelves are floating um, IKEA media shelves. Um, they're made out of metal. This is kind of what my collection looked like when I was a teenager. This is everything that I had, was DVDs on these shelves. Um, but obviously it has evolved since then. But they're great shelves, I don't think they make them anymore. Um, and then we got a bunch of the pint-sized horror figures there, and just a regular shelf to continue on the DVD collection. And we also have a, a DVD tower right there, the Jack Torrance five-star figure up top. I was going to wait till the end to show you the stuff in the middle, um, but this is actually where the DVDs end, so I'll show this to you now. Again, this is a Target cube storage in the middle here, um, and that's where the DVDs end. And at the bottom, that's where the horror DVDs end. I'll show you where those are in just a minute. So yeah, here's the TV on DVD. Um, the shelf that in the middle here had for a really long time. It looks like it's sagging in the middle, but it's sturdy, I promise. Um, I've had this for a really long time. I've always had a lot of TV on DVD. Up top we got the OC and Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Full House and MASH. And then this rack over here, this is kind of a cheap um, Atlantic shelf, but it fit in this space. So there's like the end of the TV. And then down here we have the HD DVD collection. Which is kind of a fun format to collect. And then coming up top above this window, um, we again have some stuff that we like to display up here. 
these are kind of a continuation of those box sets I was showing you out in the main area from like Second Sight and Indicator. Um, from left to right we have In Bruges, Scum, the last movie, the Burn Book edition of Mean Girls, a George Melia's DVD box set, Upgrade, and Under the Shadow. And continuing over here to our next Elite shelf, at the top we have Friends, the complete series on Blu-ray. When I started collecting Blu-rays, that was one of the first things I had to pick up. My all-time favorite TV show. We have the Star Trek Stardate collection, the James Bond collection, and then some cool editions of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and Argo. And then of course those are some Disney Infinity figures up top there. Pretty fun. And again, the drama collection is by far the largest genre. We have an entire shelf here of drama movies. Then in the middle, got a bunch of my horror and it mystery minis. Really like to display these. Also some universal monsters in there. Really cool. I don't have them all, but I do have a bunch. But yeah, drama takes up this entire shelf. That'll probably be the last genre that I showcase just because it is so large. Probably will even have to split it up into two. Then coming over here, this is actually the closet, um, but we took the closet doors off and turned this into a space where we could put some more shelving. So I'll go ahead and show you what's in here. Starting on the left side, up top here we have a bunch of pop figures and those actually go all the way across the closet on the shelf up there. It's actually worked out really well. Great place to store some pop figures and display them. And then coming back over here, this is our horror DVD shelf actually. At, at the top we have a couple of plush figures. There we have uh, Ash and Michael Myers. And then we have some horror TV shows, The Addams Family, Tales from the Crypt, and The Monsters. And again, this is the horror DVD collection have a ton of these, mostly because I buy them at uh, Dollar Tree all the time, which you guys see if you watch our Dollar Tree videos. And then the rest of the horror DVDs are over here, um, below this pop shelf. Up top we have a Friday the 13th Lenticular, probably can't see that super well, but uh, it's a pretty cool DVD that I found. Uh, I got a flocked Teen Wolf pop figure, a little Pennywise there. Uh, we got the Friday the 13th series and Tales from the Dark Side series on DVD, as well as the Twilight Zone on Blu-ray. And some shot glasses I got from Spirit Halloween. And there's the rest of the horror DVDs. And again, they end over where the rest of the DVDs are on that cube storage in the middle. And then the other shelf that we have in here, um, I can't remember what kind of shelf this is kind of a knockoff solder shelf. It's another one I got second hand. Uh, but this is the TV on Blu-ray collection. Constantly running out of space for these, so I have a bunch of them kind of stacked up top. Over here we have the uh, Scooby-Doo Where Are You series. It's a really cool box set. We got Samurai Jack complete series. <clears throat> Well, you guys can see these okay. Uh, I got the Bates Motel complete series that's from the UK actually. It's really cheap like $25 to get that. Uh, Fraggle Rock Batman complete television series. That 70s show from Mill Creek and 30 Rock from Mill Creek as well. They're killing it with these box sets. Flintstones complete series. Um, you have a Sheldon bobblehead. I've had that for a really long time actually. Uh, OJ Made in America. Twin Peaks, the television collection that says all three seasons. Sopranos, a show that I'm ashamed to say I have not watched yet, but I do have the Blu-ray set, so I will watch it hopefully soon. Um, I also have Friends on DVD. I love this show and I own it multiple ways. Um, and then we also have Game of Thrones. This is seasons one through seven, as well as season eight on the left there. And then we just have our alphabetical TV on Blu-ray. Again, always running out of space for these, so I'm gonna have to figure something out at some point for those. And then the genres continue over here. 
Um, but real quick up top, we got a bunch of really cool horror pop figures. Initially, this whole shelf in here was basically horror Blu-rays, but since the collection shifted, it's now like half drama, half horror, but have some cool pop figures up here nonetheless. Probably some of my favorites. Uh, we got the only at Walmart Chucky from Child's Play 3, uh, Black Phillip from The Witch, Leatherface, a Hot Topic exclusive, um, the Walmart exclusive Chatterer, Hot Topic exclusive Pennywise, which is the Deadlights pop figure, a Hot Topic exclusive Elvira, the Walgreens exclusive Sackhead Jason, and then a uh, cool Killer Clown Slim figure over there. But yeah, some of my favorite pop figures. And the drama collection continues on about halfway down that shelf. And then with uh, Nosferatu, that is where the horror Blu-ray collection begins. Of course, these are all basically um, horror Blu-rays that aren't on a boutique label. Still have quite a few of those. This shelf here, this little tower, this is kind of a... We're hoping these will come out on Blu-ray soon, or these have a Blu-ray that we need to get. DVD rack, basically. Um, yeah, kind of random. And then over here we have more cube storage, and that's where the horror collection continues. Goes all the way across and down there. Um, we didn't initially use these for our genre collections, but we just decided to start using the middle shelving as well and it really created a lot of space for us and then this shelf here um, we actually got from buybacks um, it's a local store here actually I think it's a chain there throughout the country but um, we saw it sitting kind of in the back of their store empty and we asked if they were happened to be selling it and they called the seller or the owner of the store and uh, they were like, oh yeah, we are selling it. How much do you want to pay for it? We said 50 bucks and they said, okay, it's yours. So kind of a cool way to get a shelf like this. I think you can buy these on Amazon. I believe they're made by a company called Venture. I will double check and put the link below, um, but they are kind of pricey. Um, normally they do spin. We don't have the spinner on it, um, but it makes a really good uh, standalone shelf for the middle of the room. Eventually, I do want to paint it black, but for now it works. And up top, we have the Bride of Chucky NECA. Sorry, it's extremely dusty up here. Not something I see very often. This is above my eye line. Um, and then got some of the horror five-star figures. Really like those. And horror continues over here. The horror genre continues all the way down here really like how this turned out using this as our genre collection. Before this, the shelf was actually mostly empty, um, save for a few labels we had on here. And then horror goes all the way over here and ends. And then we have our romance collection headed by Samantha Baker from 16 Candles. Um, actually just did a complete collection video of this if you guys want to check that out. And romance goes all the way down there. And this is where it kind of jumps around a little bit. It doesn't continue till um, the other side over there, so we'll head over that way. Again, this is where the DVDs are. This is where um, the, the regular DVDs end and then the horror DVDs end down there. Up top, I, I have a little JBL speaker that I, I use to listen to music when I'm in here organizing, um, as well as Andrew's really cool George Melia's box set that he got has his autobiography inside. So we're gonna come over here uh, and show the other side of these figure, of these shelves, sorry. Um, at the top here we have Andrew's G Kids collection. He did a video showcasing all of these. Um, it's definitely his favorite label or distributor, if you will. Uh, he loves G Kids films. A lot of the ones I've seen I've really enjoyed as well. Um, they basically release like international animated films as well as anime. Um, but yeah, he has a complete collection of those. He's very proud of that. Um, at the end there we have the 4K of Weathering With You. And then this is the anime collection. This is really um, Andrew's ballpark. 
I don't know a lot about a lot of these, but uh, it's his anime collection. And then over here, up top, we have um, a My Neighbor Totoro uh, Collector's Edition, I guess. Great Studio Ghibli film. Um, then we have our Friends Lego set. Love it. And then over here, we have our Disney collection. We did do a video showcasing all of these if you guys want to check that out. Um, we have a pretty complete Disney collection. I believe we own all of the Disney Blu-rays, uh, save for the exclusives. We don't own all of those. And then they end over here um, with Madame Leota from Haunted Mansion. And we have the um, exclusives that we have. We don't have them all, but we do have a bunch. Um, these are the Disney Movie Club exclusives. And then up top here, got a, uh, a Boba Fett figure, pop figure, a couple of How to Train Your Dragon figures. And then this little suitcase here is the uh, Harry Potter HD DVD set. I believe it's the first five films. Kind of just a fun little piece for the collection. And then continuing down this shelf, uh, these are our custom Netflix Blu-rays. Um, a bunch of these we bought from Stinky Tuna and just made custom covers and put them in red cases. However, some of them don't have discs in them quite yet. Uh, we're hoping to be able to author our own discs at some point, just for our own personal enjoyment. And then we have a few more of our custom Blu-ray covers there, a couple of randoms. I got my double of the F word slash what if and my spontaneous DVD there since I put the DVD in my spontaneous Blu-ray case that I made. If you guys want to see more about these, check out our custom covers video. And then we have Olive Films, a label that we don't have too many of, but uh, they fit right there. A little Pennywise pot figure at the end. And then over here, uh, this is the continuation of Romance. Like I said, kind of takes a minute to get around to it, but it is right here. And again, uh, Target Cube storage here. And that's the rest of the Romance collection until you get down here to the very bottom where BB-8 is. Um, and that's the beginning of the sci-fi fantasy collection, which we will be doing that one soon. Another one I have to do with Andrew. <laughs> Up here, we have a little TV. This is a pretty recent addition to the movie room. I wanted a TV in here so we could play uh, like movie trailers, make it feel like a um, old video store. But actually, I've ended up just watching a lot of stuff on streaming while I'm in here organizing. So it has turned out to be a really good purchase for the movie room and kind of adds a fun dimension to it. And then over here in the corner, up top, we have a bunch more pop figures and one of the shorter Atlantic Elite shelves. Uh, this is where the sci-fi collection continues, sci-fi fantasy collection up top. Um, this is technically part of the Arrow collection. It is an Arrow Academy release, the Woody Allen box sets that they did in the UK. Um, a lot of his films in the U.S. were released by Twilight Time and are out of print, so this was a great way to add a bunch of them to the collection. And then I have the U.K. limited edition of The Man Who Fell to Earth and the collector's edition of Watchmen over there. Again, this is the sci-fi fantasy collection, another one of our smaller genres. Same with the romance. And then it ends right there with C-3PO. Then we have some stuff that we're trying to get rid of. And actually, sneak peek, this is probably some stuff we'll be throwing in a giveaway pretty soon. And we are back to the beginning of the room over here. So yeah, that is our main movie room. This is a, a space where I can spend lots and lots of time. Um, sometimes I just come in here and stare at movies or I, I take pictures of them and show them to my Instagram followers. So. If you guys uh, are ever bored, definitely check out my Instagram uh, where you can see some more pictures of the collection. I show random recommendations in there as well. But yeah, that's the main movie room. And next thing I'm going to show you, we've talked about it before on our channel but haven't shown it to you, and that's our game room, also known as the Retro Room. Uh, we got a little game room sign up there. I actually found that at like a Savers for really cheap. It was a pretty cool find. 
Um, and then we got the Silent Night, Deadly Night Scream Factory poster. Actually, believe it or not, I have a few Scream Factory posters that I still need to hang up. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and go into the retro room now. Alrighty, welcome to the retro room, which actually may be more aptly named the game room, music room, retro room. Um, but basically this room is our childhood dreams realized, I believe is what I would say. Um, it is all kind of jam-packed in here, but uh, we did the best with the space we were given, and we have a whole lot of stuff, and this kind of became the landing ground for stuff that we didn't know where to put anywhere else. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started with this room. Uh, first thing you'll see when you come in is this Carrie poster and Donnie Darko. These of course are posters that came with the Arrow video releases and the Night of the Living Dead poster from the Criterion release. Um, one of the main fixtures of this room is our VHS collection, which we just collect for nostalgia purposes and it's just a heck of a lot of fun to find these. Um, this shelf here houses some of my favorite tapes, most of which are horror, as you can see. Uh, but yeah, some of my favorites here. Such nostalgia with these. And then this down here, this is actually a video game cabinet. One of the other purposes of this room is for our video game collection, so I'll go ahead and open that up. Sorry the angle's not great here. Um, again, it's a really tight space, but uh, yeah, this room is for our retro video games, I should say. I uh, got our original Xbox collection here. And then over here, we have our PS2 collection. Again, sorry about the glare and the angle. This isn't the easiest thing to film. And we also keep our PS3 games in here, although the PS3, of course, is out in the main living area. And then down below, we have our PSP and PS Vita collections. And over here, our GameCube collection, which admittedly, GameCube's probably my favorite console. I love the GameCube. And then coming over here, we have a Deep Red poster. Um, and then I have my Amberlin poster for their album, Dark is the Way, Light is a Place. Um, all of those little letters on there are names of the people that pre-ordered the album, so my name is on there. And taking a step back here, we have um, my cassette collection. I actually did just get a cassette shelf that I need to hang up at some point, um, but this works for now. And then this is a bunch of our retro audio equipment. Sorry, it's a little, little sloppy looking up top. Uh, got a lot of posters that we need to hang up, and some wires. Um, but yeah, this is our oldest turntable. This is a Pioneer PL600. Got it off of the classifieds for really cheap and got some Sony speakers with it. And then of course we have the little uh, Crossley 2020 mini turntable with the little records up top there. Uh, again, sorry for the clutter. Got some CDs there. And there's our receiver. I'm sure it's very, very dusty. It's a uh, Pioneer. SX312R. I got a little JVC tape deck, a Technics CD changer, and then a couple of 8 tracks down below. Again, still working on getting those to work. So if you like old school audio equipment, that's what we have there. Uh, it's kind of a fun nostalgia trip for us. Then over here in the corner, again, very dusty, uh, but is my Yamaha DTX electric drum set. I play the drums as a hobby. I'm not very good, but I've always really enjoyed playing the drums. It's a lot of fun. Um, Andrew got me a double bass pedal for Christmas, so I'm really excited about that. Can't really see it there, but you know, these are very hard to, to dust and keep clean, so they look kind of terrible. But uh, over here, got a bunch of cool posters from Arrow. Got pieces Candyman, Last House on the Left, American Werewolf in London, Cat o' Nine Tails, Bird with the Crystal Plumage, um, Hellraiser, The Thing, Robocop, and Alice, Sweet Alice. This is a fun place to hang them because it kind of gives you that um, old school video store feel. And then we got a Friends poster up there above the window. And then coming back here, um, we have our PS1 games, our PS1 collection, and then the beginning of our VHS collection. We do separate 
the horror and non-horror VHS tapes. But again, I really wanted this room to have kind of a old school video store feel. And I think we definitely accomplished that. So over there in the corner on the spinner, that's the beginning of the horror tape collection. You know, When a Stranger Calls poster up there, Nightbreed NECA, a bunch of our odd sized VHS tapes, including a cool um, Godfather box set. And again, this little spinner here has a bunch of horror tapes on it. And then we got a City of the Living Dead poster, Django, and Beyond the Door. And right here we got a uh, Back to the Future NECA figure, as well as a little Back to the Future uh, car set. Up here this is a really retro shelf of cool stuff we've collected in an old clock radio. Andrew loves to collect those. A couple of amiibos and some old cameras. Thing that we love to collect together. The Hellraiser VHS box set and another amiibo. And then coming down here we got more VHS tapes. More horror tapes. Got a bunch of Disney tapes right here and then these are basically just a bunch of unorganized tapes spin around here. This kind of shows our uh, video game system setup that we have over here. I'll get a little bit closer and show those to you. And we have another spinner full of VHS tapes right here. Right here we have the Friday the 13th NECA from the NES game, as well as a couple of pop figures modeled after the NES game. And again we've got a bunch of VHS tapes here. And then in this case here are a bunch of beta tapes, which we actually have a working beta player, believe it or not. Yeah, they basically just look like that in there. Our beta collection. I won't show you all of them, but kind of a fun little piece to have. Got some more figures there. Then this is our laser disc collection. Most of it up there. And then we've got a few down here on the floor. Got our giant Mario figure here. And then this is another video game cabinet. I'll go ahead and open that real quick. It's gonna be pretty tough to see, but we got a bunch of Genesis games, SNES games. NES games, more Genesis. Sorry for the awkward angle, guys. Coming back over here, we got our little couch to sit on. There's another angle of all those tapes back there. Um, you have the Hocus Pocus pop figures in here. Just a quick little scan over that corner. Again, it's really tight over there, so sorry for the awkward angle. And I have Hills of Eyes and Hills of Eyes Part 2. And I've got some of my favorite beta tapes over here. Some cool ones that I like to show off. Especially really like these horror ones I have up top. And over here we got the Wii collection. And above that got the House That Vanished poster. Our NECA Jason mask. Another Friends poster. And in the closet here Got yeah, a Hemisphere Horrors Severin poster. We've got some VHS tapes and betas around our old school CRTV that we use for uh, gaming as well as tape and uh, beta watching and laser disc watching. Then down here on the TV stand, we got our Xbox, our Sega Saturn, our little uh, SNES Mini and PS1 Mini. Uh, which we actually play on the little HDTV we have up here. We have our VHS player, our beta player, and our laser disc player down below. And coming over here, I apologize for all the wires, it's very difficult to manage, but we got our NES, our SNES, Nintendo 64, Sega Genesis, Nintendo GameCube, that is the original one that I got when I was a kid. Most of these are actually. Uh, the Dreamcast, the PS1 and the PS2. Got some posters I need to hang up right there. Our sad Sega Saturn collection. That's our latest console. We still need to get a lot more of those games. Um, got our 3DS PSP there and a bunch of our CDs that don't have cases. And then up top here I uh, got my N64 games in that case. 
the original case, the N64 was my sister's that she gave to me, which is really awesome. Uh, and we got a link up there, little old school TV. Andrew's awesome Dragon's Lair poster in there and a creep show lithograph. And then this TV up top is the one that we use for more of the HD stuff. Under a light it looks terrible, but it's actually a, a decent little TV. And we've got some random storage up there. Um, but yeah, again, I apologize for the awkward camera angles in here. It's a very tight room, but again, it's our childhood dreams realized. Kind of a fun little section of the collection that we don't talk about as often. Um, but I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I know I went a little more in depth in this video than I did on our last collection overview. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, keep an eye on our on our channel. We will continue to be uploading lots of content. We want to thank everyone for getting us to a thousand subscribers. It's so awesome of you to do. Again, send us questions for our Q&A video that we'll be doing pretty soon. And uh, don't forget to hit the bell to hear when we upload new videos. And we will see you on the next one. Thank you.